Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about things I suck at. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, I have a subscriber question. What topics were you most were the most difficult for you to wrap your head around when you were just starting out and do you have any of those now? Well, I am very happy to see that even at my small little I don't even want to call it fame, but let's call it fame for the sake of argument. People can get fooled into believing that just because I have this pre-recorded video where I'm in complete control of the question and my answer and I can do everything I want, I can give you the illusion that I know everything. Now, imagine that I can do that uh, and I'd never actually prepare anything and I don't edit anything imagine what the people that you really look up to who uh, who do all that stuff can make you believe food for thought so I'm gonna be completely transparent with you and I will tell you immediately that there, if you've ever get got the idea that I am some type of all-knowing guru I am the far the furthest thing from it and there are still many many topics within IT that I have zero skill in less than zero I can't even help you I, I mean I could probably not even fake an answer on these topics but let's walk through it so when I first started I had an enormous amount of amounts of problems like there was it's hard to just go through all of the different things that were complicated everything was complicated everything from uh, how uh, how to build web servers how do you like what does actually happen in the computer to uh, threading and asynchronous programming I think st I still think cryptography is still super super hard You're just explaining how an as asymmetric key is going to work as an example you know what we use basically for all of our uh, TLS encryptions and things like that certificates like there's so much that you need to look up and I can't go through all of it so I'm just gonna go and take the thing that I thought probably stood out the most to me when I first started out and the thing that I thought was the most uh, complicated was to figure out how everything fit together so it was very easy to get a tutorial on say HTML and kinda get ah okay this is HTML you write it this way and the same thing went for CSS yeah, okay CSS alright some style sheets you add some rules and you get some styles on your on your screen on your screen right away well, okay, these things are fairly simple and then you kinda understood what a web server was and HTTP and so forth but then like, fitting all this together that was the hard part because at least I, I never really felt that I got a sensation of this is real. Okay, this is how it all fits together. This is how it works. This is that we like we had all of these pieces, but putting them together in the right way, I thought was enormously complicated. I had one case where, uh, where I had we had built in school this simple little web application. It was basically just a login form for a website, as I remember and I had hidden the login box of like the login screen to that uh, to that website in CSS it was just a dialog that I made in HTML and some JavaScript on the page and there you could input the login information and then of course the check for whether or not I should get linked to the so-called secured resource because I didn't even understand what security was uh, it was in the JavaScript file so I like the login was admin and of course the password was I think it was foobar or something like that and it was all in the static assets and to my mind like that was yeah no it was fine because I didn't understand how how you secured something I didn't understand like that oh these files they're actually public they're actually something that you can see because I'd never gotten to that point and so I presented this to a few of my classmates and one of my classmates had actually he'd been working as a professional software developer for a few years but he was taking the course to learn a new language and so he just showed me in his browser his own browser on my website like that oh yeah I can just dis remove this rule and there is your login and here are all your like here's the password and everything and then he showed me that he could actually just go to the 
website because I didn't actually do any work on the server. I wasn't restricting access with a session or anything like that. And then he laughed. He laughed a lot. And I was <laughs> I was super embarrassed. Uh, it was uh, it was a it was a very healthy learning moment for me at the personal level because I realized that if I still remember these moments whenever I start to think that I'm all that oh I know all of this stuff and I'm so good at programming just have a few of those and remember them it helps another trick I can give you is save every product that you ever make. I still have, if you want to go and look at what I, my coding was looking like when I was in school or like way back when, you can go to my GitHub today and find the oldest projects. I promise you, it is. My ears, my, my eyes almost tear from the embarrassment. But that is how it's supposed to be. You get better and you get embarrassed by the stuff that you used to make. But if we talk about today, I still have things that I think is really, really complicated. Uh, I would say that you, like, what I do now is that I spend a lot of my time because I've, I've I've reached a point in like the normal stuff that I do every day where I feel very comfortable in the normal application development stuff and so forth. So I focus on the things that I'm not so good at, but at the same time, things that are going to help me become a more well-rounded software developer. Because my ultimate goal is, of course, at least for me to become the uh, what I call the universal programmer. It's just the, or call it the true full stack developer. I want to be able to do all the things that are associated in building products, regardless of practically what type of product that is. But as you can imagine, since I primarily do web work, it's almost all I do. I've done some mobile and stuff, stuff of that nature. I don't really have any experience w in more in-depth topics. So what I spend a lot of time trying to figure out, which I think is, I mean, it's really hard for me is say system levels development. I still have not to this day gotten that really nice clear mental picture of how the how the the interfaces between hardware in the computer and the operating system like how does that actually work? How do you like the instructions that come from the circuits and the pins on the uh, in the actual computer or like the processor and so forth? I mean I know what these things are but like to really get that gut level understanding I hope that makes sense to you that you really go yeah this is a I mean I understand this stuff no problem I don't have that so I go and look at people who can teach me that sort of thing is security also is also a big thing for me where I know that that's a very important topic so I try to go and learn from people who work with pen testing or bug bounty hunters and people like that who are working in that space and try to figure out okay how do they do work like what are the exploits and what can you actually do and what and because it, I know that that's going to give me a really good uh, handle on what do I need to think about when I do my work as a software developer what are things that I really need to pay attention to like I I've learned so much from that. And then of course you have things such as machine learning. I, I'm not a computer scientist, not at all. I've taken a few courses way back when. So that's something that I'm also learning and trying to understand. And these are just a few of the things that I'm looking at these days. So what I want you to take away from this is that for me, the first thing that was really complicated when I was starting out as a software developer was to understand how all of these different individual technologies that you kind of have to learn, how do I put all of this together? And how do I, well, I wouldn't call it architecture necessarily. It was more about just figuring out how everything fits together. Uh, I can, just as an example, one of the biggest revelations that I ever had was when somebody, when it really clicked that, well, HTML is the language that we use to ex basically just tell the browser how to get the CSS and JavaScript and like all this stuff. It's like a, it's like a specification file for how I want my web page to look. Because when you were just learning HTML, it was just a tag system. You didn't really make that. I, I didn't make that connection that, oh, this is the, the relationship between HTML, CSS and JavaScript. It was only when I had this bigger picture when it started to click. And this was a major problem for me to figure out uh, in the early days. And today I still have tons of stuff that is outside of the stuff that I do every day that I don't really know all that much about. But I'm trying to improve in them because I'm generally interested. Not because I have to, just because I really think it's interesting. And I can promise you right here and right now that every single guru on the internet you've ever talked to, regardless of who it is, I don't care if it's M M Martin Fowler or Uncle Bob himself, they have tons of stuff 
they have no clue about because nobody in software knows everything. Have a great day.